It's a deal for Zale, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review or morning update of uh, the European markets uh, on the uh, Wednesday, the 30th of March, 2016. Okay, so uh, we certainly have a U-turn in uh, global markets, with uh, although the Nikkei certainly isn't uh, joining this uh, this uh, stimulus-led, uh, no rate hike-led uh, rally. Uh, certainly, Miss uh, Yellen yesterday obviously was... Uh, was uh, much more dovish than everybody expected and she certainly uh, divorced herself from her peers uh, which obviously are hawks and sent the dollar crashing equity markets obviously inflating higher now that that trade is certainly old from my perspective i mean yes okay for the next 24 hours or so 12 hours or so markets will short squeeze higher because obviously the the the, the positioning going into the uh, the actual uh, potential uh, uh, fomc or miss yellen speech etc was may, may well have been bearish uh, given the fact that uh, she was uh, expected to toe the line and a potential u-turn was uh, was in offering given the fact that all her peers obviously uh, were were uh, certainly hawkish and the economic data hasn't been that bad either uh, in terms of uh, uh, obviously justifying a potential a further rate hike so given the fact that everybody expected two more rate hikes this year and we're already in march or starting april now uh, the dollar should or should technically remain well bid Obviously, uh, I was wrong, and uh, a lot of other individuals are certainly wrong as well. So, it certainly is a precarious situation, and one that uh, will be interesting to observe in the next 12 to 24 hours. But having said that, uh, the concept of a weaker dollar inflating equity markets is no longer um, something that can be entertained. Why? Because uh, it's a zero sum game, because everybody is engaging in QE now. So, one individual were to increase their QE tap, it hurts the other economy. So, such as the Euro USD. Uh, spiking to 1.13 or exceeding 1.13 and the USD JPY uh, crashing as low or almost low, as low as 112 uh, is certainly negative for the Nikkei and it's certainly negative for European markets. Now we, we actually witnessed that in the Japanese markets. We can see that the Nikkei certainly finished down 1.3% given the fact that USD JPY obviously lower and that hurts their export markets. So it's not always net net positive. That's one thing that we all need to realize. Now I've certainly been attempting to short the market. I've shorted the uh, Euro stocks and I've stopped, been stopped out there. I shorted CAC. I was stopped out there. I shorted the, well, I'm currently short the FTSE and I've reshorted the CAC as well. And I'm short the NASDAQ at present. So my buy still remains bearish, even though the, uh, the concept of the weak dollar uh, rally is uh, obviously said to inflate equities and uh, commodities, should I say. And, and that's one of the reasons, one of the most important points that she did uh, mention, commodities. If there was a sell-off in commodities again, then it would severely hurt the market and obviously would alter her path of raising rate hikes. So I'm not sure what her thought process is. It's certainly baffling and confusing, given the fact that she, she certainly seems to have backtracked and everything. Uh, and um, it's hard uh, as a trader to adjust now. You just have to observe our variables. You've got the Kiwi now uh, hitting uh, a new highs. Before I do, be sure to visit tradesignaler.com, folks, and uh, certainly download the app from the uh, Android and the App Store, and that's where I post my charts and analysis on there going forward and uh, uh, promising things to come in the future as well. Okay, right, let's look at the uh, Aussie uh, and the Kiwi. I mean, the Kiwi, very, very spectacular. If I bring up the weekly chart, the Kiwi, I mean, look at that move higher. We've broken above the uh, 0.6690 zone very very impressively okay we're currently above 0.69 now we're in breakout territory the next level is 0.72 and is that justified with the price of oil is it justified with the copper i mean copper's languishing at the lows at 219 oil yes we've had a uh, short squeeze bounce and nothing but prolific nothing as prolific as equities so it certainly remains baffling very very confusing in terms of this potential move okay now economic data this morning uh overall net net we've had uh if I just go back now and refresh, I think the only real uh, economic data that we really need to focus on was Japanese industrial production came in very, very poor, came in at minus 6.2%, hence the reason why the Nikkei was under pressure. And uh, in terms of European data this morning, consumer confidence came out weaker, services weaker, business climate, okay, came in slightly stronger, economic sentiment indicator weaker, industrial confidence weaker. So certainly doesn't justify the rally okay certainly does not justify the rally from my perspective okay and certainly looking for weakness and i remain in the bearish camp okay looking at the euro stocks now you can clearly see that we're into that 75 percent resistance on the 60 minute chart uh, obviously we have the unfilled gap left below that gap certainly needs to be targeted we are looking at topping out after we've closed the gap at this uh, key level which is at 3042 
and now looking for uh, weakness from my perspective okay moving on to the uh, german dax now let's bring up the german dax certainly we've pushed higher here as well as you can see we've put in a topping tail on the german dax as you can see there again remember euro pass 1.13 certainly is is, is, is bearish uh, we've closed the gap and we do have an unfilled gap left behind so we are looking to potentially target that 60 minute chart of the german dax we're trading sideways uh, whether you want to call this a hns type formation this is up to you uh, whether we're looking at a key re or pivotal reversal here left shoulder potential head and looking for a move lower again it's certainly uh, subjective but from my perspective i do expect the german dax to hold this fib retracement level so fib take it high to low uh, and uh, you are looking at a fib 75 percent resistance only from my perspective okay again you have the unfilled gap below and the target the real the real target really should be the uh, the 9500 zone why and this is quite important the reason why i say that is with the euro usd going above 1.13 is actually negative for ex exports and also given the fact that the ecb has said that they're done in terms of cutting rates all they have now is qe and if uh, you have central bank disparity now because they were relying on miss yellen to be uh, well continue to be hawkish and that's no longer the case anymore okay and given the fact that that's no longer the case then try and uh, you know add one on one together. It certainly is a precarious situation. They certainly seem to have have um, basically um, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, and they're basically calling themselves or rogered themselves. Why? Because they can't cut rates now, so they can't force the euro down. They can't even talk the euro down. The euro USD is going to go higher, and the whole um, concept of QE really is about debauching your currency and helping export. So. But then you have the Germans, obviously, uh, totally against that. And we've all, all already had comments this morning, anti-QE comments with regards to the euro, anti-QE comments with regards to the euro. So again, that's going to be the sole reason. That's going to be the sole reason for the uh, the actual sell-off in the uh, equ European equities. Okay, a rally in the euro. I mean, at the moment, the daily chart is certainly holding resistance at this 1.1340 level. Given the fact that Miss Yellen obviously has stated or maintained her hawkish stance, that will cause the uh, disparity between the two central banks and cause the euro to even move higher. And that alone will be a reason for the European equities sell-off. Okay, hence the reason why that German DAX, which has that 9500 gap fill, certainly remains in motion. Okay. And that's why I'm bearish, okay? If that gap wasn't or rem or didn't remain open and we didn't have EURUSD uh, flying higher past 1.13, then obviously I'll, I'll have an alternative opinion. But given the fact that we're still trading sideways and we've still failed to take out that resistance at 10, 10 100, uh, the only reason why we pushed higher from my perspective is this gap fill at uh, 10, 0, 20, and we've certainly closed that now. So my perspective, we're moving lower, okay? That's my understanding and my interpretation. And the fact that everybody is jumping on this bandwagon of, of okay, dollar, weak, dollar, weak, dollar, weak, dollar. Obviously, Miss Yellen is going to be more, um, well, that certainly is inflating uh, equities and there's no other way, place to park your money, looking for let, looking for yield, etc., etc. The inflation trade, blah, blah, blah. There is no inflation, okay? So, looking at it from a long-term perspective, it's not exactly uh, honky-dory either. Okay, right. So, German DAX 9500, remember, that will be the key variable to propel European markets lower. That's my understanding and my interpretation. Looking at the French CAC, I mean, it's certainly in comparison to the FTSE and the uh, US markets, you can see that it certainly hasn't pushed higher at all in the daily chart. Looking at a 60 minute chart, the French CAC, obviously we are into this uh, uh, lower lows and lower highs. So this trend line that we have here, I mean, we had this initial trend line here that obviously has not, not held. So we go to the next pivot high, connect it to the high here, and you can see that the diagonal trend line resistance is certainly holding. Using your Fibonacci retracement on the 60 minute chart, take it from the high, take it to the low, and we're into that Fib 75% resistance. So you are looking for a lower high here, looking to potentially move lower. The 10 minute chart of the French CAC, you have the uh, unfilled gap below. Okay, so that gap certainly will uh, remain in motion. When the market propels uh, as high as we have uh, we witnessed here, that gap always acts as a magnet and forces price action back, as we all know in technical analysis. So that gap certainly is in motion that's the gap that i will be looking to potentially target for now okay obviously we've closed this gap here and uh, we are looking for the uh, the next move okay looking at the FTSE 100 now uh, brexit phase as we all know certainly dominates okay so uh, looking at the 60 minute chart you can see that we have this lower high so therefore lower lows lower high and looking for a potential move lower on the FTSE the 10 minute chart certainly is showing weakness as you can see we've closed that potential gap it was all about that gap at 10 to 6 200 okay we've closed the gap I do. I am a short the FTSE, so I'll certainly confirm. And my bias certainly remains bearish on this. We are looking for a potential move lower 
to test this level here. Previous uh, resistance equals support at 6160. And then the unfill gap is uh, remains at 6100. So uh, a 100 point move on the FTSE today. Very, very impressive. Okay, very impressive. Okay, so given the fact that the daily chart on the FTSE, bear in mind, folks, that uh, bearish engulfing candle uh, triggered by next, okay, triggered by next in the retail sector walls. It certainly is in motion. The upper body is 6200. So it's very hard for me to uh, envisage that breaking down. Let's bring up the retail sector whilst we're here. Uh, also, the FTSE 250 can cross reference with that as well. FTSE uh, 250, obviously, you can see here we're into resistance, and therefore, you're looking for FTSE to be into resistance as well. Uh, going over to the retail sector, do I have the retail here? Oil, banks, FTSE. Oil and gas, mining. Ah, here we go. FTSE retail. So, FTSE retail is the key uh, chart to observe from my perspective, given the fact that, like I said, next caused the carnage, caused the sell off. And uh, you are looking at a uh, consolidation or a potential bear flag here, obviously, and then a, a move lower. Okay, so looking for weakness there. Okay, so I think that's a summation of European markets. Uh, be sure, as always, to uh, visit CFDs.com. Uh, for your trading needs, the uh, specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage, and you can earn up to a 25% cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. And uh, be sure to uh, download the uh, Trade Signal app as well, folks, uh, where you can see my analysis posted there daily. Wish you well for the uh, trading day ahead. Goodbye now.